leaders set the vision. You say, if vision is we're going to climb mountains, strategy is we're going to climb those mountains, and tactics is how do you get up the mountain? So leaders need to have the vision thing. This is where I'm going. Come with me. Second, you lead by example. Never ask anybody to do something you wouldn't do yourself. And always praise people in public, make them feel good, and always tell them off in private so you don't humiliate them. Don't duck telling them off because if they've been doing it wrongly, get them better training, get them in, work with them, get them to understand why it's important they're doing it in a certain way. But if at the end of the day they're breaking the rules, they need, they need to be told, you, you've got one more chance, pal, and then you're down the road. And there's not a thing they won't do for you. You know, they'll, they'll climb every mountain, they'll, they'll swim every river. In the military, they, they'd go into the jaws of death for you. I mean, it is, it is so important. And it, they, these, these talents are constant in business, in the military, in sport, they're just the same. When I came out of university, I was in the Royal Navy, and I was, uh, I did three years in, in the Royal Navy in the mid-70s, but then I uh, signed up to a training contract, Article to Clerkship, we called it at the time, as a lawyer in, uh, in a solicitor in Birmingham. And I was there for 20 years, and I was there as an article clerk, then an assistant, then an associate, then a partner, then a head of department, then deputy senior partner, then senior partner, all in 20 years. And then I left there, um, and, and for about 18 months, I went as a head of corporate finance in a major firm of accountants, but then I went to the CBI. And I built my career at the CBI, Confederation of British Industry, lobbying for business. Then I went off to be Minister of Trade in the government, and then I went plural, and I'm chairman of six companies, and I write books, and I deliver speeches, and I'm, uh, you see me on TV and radio and whatever. I hope you don't see me on radio. I've got a great face for radio, actually. We had a senior partner at the law firm in Birmingham called John Wardle. He was quite Churchillian, really, a big cigar and a brandy, a brandy or a whiskey on uh, in the afternoons often. And you wouldn't do any of that today, believe me. But in these days, 30, 40 years ago, that it, he, he did it. But he was so full of leadership. He got a very quick mind, and he wasn't frightened of communicating it. And he gave me a hard time, often. He always pushed me harder and harder and I responded and I watched him and I, he used to say to me keep your ears open and your eyes open and your mouth shut follow me and I used to watch him and I used to see how he did it and, and I learned a lot from it. One of the biggest opportunities British business will have post Brexit will be a bespoke trade deal with the United States. At the moment we have to tuck in with the rest of the European Union for the relationship with the USA and for instance France, very protected, protectionist country, doesn't like opening up its markets to America. Um, whereas Britain and America have always had a special relationship ever since the Second World War. And it's not just in intelligence and defence where we do, but it's also in, in the way we come at trade. And therefore we will be able to use their market, 320 million sophisticated consumers, far more than we do, than we do as a member of the European Union. And we will be open to their investment even more than we are now. I think one thing he should do is he should say, I'm going to put up corporation tax by 1% from 19 to 20%. So a fifth of your, of your profits are coming to the state. By the way, with that 1%, I'm going to do something for those lower paid people in the north of England. I'm going to put income tax up from 45 to 50%, which is what the Labour Party were promising. But they were promising it at 80 grand a year. I would say, no, we'll take it at 250,000 a year. So anybody over 250,000 a year, you will pay 50p in the pound. Now, with that money, and with the 1% of corporate profits extra, go to the lower paid people and say, I'll take you out of income tax. You won't have to pay any income tax. I'll take you out of it. I will do something for you you can feel in your wage slip next week. Because the other stuff, putting more money into the health service, yes please, Loads more teachers to ensure that we get smaller classrooms and we get books and pencils and everything paid for. Great stuff. More bobbies on the beat. Great stuff. If you did something right now and said, look, I'm on your side now, I want to say thank you to you. And I'm going to tax the people who voted for me a little bit, the richer people, 
but you voted for me too. And I'm not taking you for granted. Here's some money that they're paying for. And I think just the, the, the optics of that will be superb. And, and nobody in business and nobody of the rich, high income earners, are going to complain. And if they do complain, what are they going to do? You know, the choice of, is that or Marxism? They aren't going anywhere.